Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. And today we're going to be having a look at Eagle Dynamics Digital Combat Simulator or DCS. Now an update has just been released version 2.5.6 and we'll be covering that briefly. But our main focus is going to be on what can we expect from DCS during 2020 and perhaps even further out than that. The most recent update to DCS includes two very important aspects, both found wanting in DCS. Firstly, the improved water transparency and depth perception, as well as improved rendering against shorelines and along coasts. And secondly, and perhaps most importantly, improvements to the lighting environment, and particularly the night lighting. This open beta, I think, is the first step in a number of planned phases to improve these two aspects within the simulator. In addition, this update includes a whole host of bug fixes and improvements to existing aircraft and scenery. Details on their website, link in the notes below. Well, enough on the update. Let's see what DCS has got in store for us for the remainder of this year and perhaps 2021 as well. If you'd like to see more from Simhanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. Eagle Dynamics certainly have a full calendar in terms of improvements and additions they're planning to bring to DCS. Let's get started. Let's start at the very heart of DCS with the incorporation of Vulkan. What's Vulkan? Well, it's an application program interface or API designed to replace the old OpenGL platform. So what's special about that? Well, the API determines how and what instructions are fed to both the GPU and the CPU. The OpenGL platform is now antiquated, whereas Vulkan can take advantage of the new range of GPUs and their capabilities, as well as modern multi-core, multi-thread CPUs, spreading the workload more evenly, which means a smoother and improved performance, especially in VR. Originally a derivative of AMD's Mantle, this is now managed and controlled by a consortium of both large and small companies called the Kronos Group. DCS is not the only platform undertaking the incorporation of Vulkan. Explains doing the same. Microsoft Flight Simulator will take advantage of Microsoft's latest DX12 platform. Eagle Dynamics to ensure future versatility and expanded options for development are incorporating Vulkan. In the last quarter of 2019, Eagle Dynamics released a video showing us the first glimpses of DCS Supercarrier. This is due for early access release in the near future and features deck and crew animation, as well as lights, landing systems and damage modeling. In addition, it's going to feature an upgraded Russian aircraft carrier as well as new naval elements which are going to be suited to new maps soon to be released. I think you'll agree that these animations add a whole new level of immersion. Looking forward to this. Due for an early access release in the first quarter 2020. DCS gets its second free map soon with the Marianas Islands. This is going to be ideal for naval operations. It's a 400 by 400 kilometer islands map and extending beyond that to cater for naval operations. It's an ideal choice for naval action and feasible for US, Russian and China based operations. It's also served as a backdrop for World War II action. It also features Anderson Air Force Base in Guam.
Another new map that's coming out, although not free this time, is a dedicated World War II map, 1930s to 1945. It's the Channel map, with a new level of detail apparently we haven't seen before, featuring numerous airports and slated for pre-order sometime in February or early March. A number of third-party developers are also working on new maps. The first one is the Falcon Islands map from Rasban, which will feature new assets and player units to suit. The other map being worked on is the ambitious Syria map, coming from Agra Media. The map spans from Turkey in the north to Israel in the south, with Syria and Lebanon in between. The World War II Assets Pack is also coming to DCS and will feature several air, ground and naval units and they're also looking at a couple of new features which include torpedoes, paratroopers and functional searchlights. As a longer term project, Eagle Dynamics are working on a dynamic weather system which will be designed to take advantage of improved clouds and weather systems. Some long-term projects being worked on include an upgrade to the air traffic control to bring about improved ground, tower, departure and approach controllers as well as account for variables that include VFR and IFR flight. An upgrade to the AI is also planned to extend flight envelopes and improve AI control overall. This will include beyond visual range offensive and defensive behavior as well as formation keeping and very low level flight and terrain following. Some new AI units are also planned including the SA-5 surface-to-air missile and the infamous SCUD surface-to-surface -surface missile. Eagle Dynamics continue to work on voice chat with the aim being to deliver peer-to-peer -peer connectivity and user chat rooms. Planned for the future will be varied mic and audio characteristics of helmets and radios from different eras. The ultimate goal being to include communications jamming and secure voice capability. And according to Eagle Dynamics, voice chat will remain a free function within DCS. The release of DCS World 2.5.6 will include the first attempts at improving the damage system for World War II fighters in DCS. This will include round trajectory and penetration, deflection and localized damage. Eagle Dynamics have also planned to include enhanced visual damage effects that include missing structural components, fuel and hydraulic leaks. The idea is the new damage model will provide a much more engrossing and realistic experience. The longer term plan being that once the Warbirds damage model system is up and running and Eagle Dynamics are satisfied with it, they will implement this new damage modeling to the more modern aircraft, ground units and naval units. Well, by any measure, that's an impressive list of things planned for DCS. Exciting times indeed. However, Eagle Dynamics have lost a little bit of their shine recently because they've released products before they should have. Early access is fine, but you need to iron out the main bugs first. And in addition, they've missed a couple of dates. Let's hope they continue to communicate and hit the dates that they promise. I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you all again very soon and... Bye for now.